All right, and Yanelli is here with us. Hi, Selena Wayne. I hope you're eating something good, Sydney, because I just had a cup of ramen. This is for R2. I think, no problem. Somebody in R2 asked me, uh, they did say they wanted this demonstrated. So you guys already, uh, I think we already finished it in the art one and the art one version looks like this, just in pencil. This is Graffito, you know, the one with the squiggly lines. Okay, Hafsa is here. All right, just gonna wait for a couple more people to get in here before I take roll. But until then, uh, art, w art one, you're gonna be working on this, which is our very last form. This is called the cone and you are doing stippling. Art two is doing it in color and they're using a, a darker color, a lighter tint of the color, and they're using black colored pencil. So I want Art wants to be working on this guy here while I work with Art 2s uh, for a few minutes on this. So Art 2s, make sure that you keep your pencils sharp. Once in a while, sharpen them and to keep a decent point on them. It's very, my, my colored pencils don't seem to come to a point. So I just have to like turn it at a certain angle. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to right now uh, use Scraffito and Scraffito is like those little squiggly lines. And I'm trying to keep in mind that I need to make them a little tighter to make the, the value darker. Okay, so you should be working on this uh, right now so you don't have to do it for homework as much. And I'm going to be posting this one uh, over the weekend. This is the third form. And this will be due sometime, uh, I'm going to say midweek on Wednesday. So I have my red down. So now I'm going to do a layer of black on top of that. And I can go back in with another layer of red if I feel like that it's not dark enough, the color. I want to kind of come up with like a dark red or, or wine. It's called a wine or burgundy color. So the shade color it is named sometimes, it's given popular names like burgundy or, or red, you know, it's a wine color. Those are just popular names. Okay, so I'm pressing kind of hard with my uh, black pencil as well because this is the darkest shading. Maybe I'll do the top last and just kind of see how I like to make it compared to this, you know, the the shading on the side of the cylinder, just so that I could compare that to what's already done. You could always start with the top um, first. It doesn't matter what you start with, but either start with the really light stuff or really or really dark stuff. Okay, now I'm going to go in and do a second layer of red and just fill in some of those little white areas. And also, sometimes the black can can kind of make your um, colors a little bit duller, more grayish. So I'm just kind of brightening it up with a little bit more of this color. Just going in little squiggly directions, random squiggly directions. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Now my next shade is going to be to the left because my light source is on the right. So your, your, all your shade colors are going to be here, but they are going to get slightly, um, slightly lighter, okay? 
So I'm going to get the pencil, red pencil again, and this time I'm going to open up my squiggles just a little bit more. So they're not as tightly spaced. I'm going to show a little bit more of the white of the paper through in, in between my little squiggle marks. Okay, so I put my red down, now I'm going to put alternate and put another layer of black on top of the red. But I'm making these squiggles also a little bit bigger, um, just to show more of the white. And I am seeing some little white gaps here. And that's what's going to make this area right here look lighter than the one that we just finished the core shadow. This is going to be called our dark midtones. Okay, now I feel like, okay, now I'm going to, since I've done two now, I can kind of compare the two. I feel like this is a bit of a jump. Um, I feel like I could add a little bit more color to it, make it a little darker, and still have it look lighter. So I would rather have kind of the richness of the color show through as much as possible since this is a color uh, drawing. So I'm going to add a little bit more red, okay? But I'm, I'm pressing a little bit more lightly than I did over here. So, okay, I like that. I like that and maybe I'll add another little tiny bit of black not not gonna get too carried away or it'll start looking like my core shadow here just a little bit okay then I'm gonna stop right there do you, do you see the difference between the two lines here yes you still see the difference so now what's over here okay that's going to be uh, uh, even it's a slightly lighter dark middle tone, if that makes sense. So we need to just go a little bit lighter than this, and then we'll have a little lighter area of reflected light. So I'm going to put in my little red squiggles, or scriffito, and kind of keep them a little bit more loose. Um, and maybe I'm going to keep them the same amount of looseness as this stripe, but maybe not go over it a second time. Like not do two layers of color. Maybe I'll do one layer of each color. And I think that should make a difference. See, it's not that bad. We're going pretty quickly. Boom, done already with the red. Now I'm gonna go in with the black. All right, now I'm going to do, uh, I just feel like that's so light. If I'm going to make that that light, then what am, what am I going to have left to do here? Because those have to be pretty light. So I'm afraid that I'm getting a little bit too light too quickly, especially considering that this is supposed to be the dark side of the cylinder. I'm, I'm going to put another layer of red and I don't think I'm going to press very hard. I'm just going to press very lightly, but I do want to put a little bit more color down than I, than I have right now, because I feel like it's going to look too similar to what's going to happen on the right side. There we go. I'm just leaving that. Of course I can't because I always have to go back in. <laughs> All right, that's good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the reflected light area here. 
So I'm going to keep the squiggles kind of big. You can see I'm doing big squiggles and I am also opening up my squiggles so they look kind of big. Okay. Okay, and that's it. That's my reflected light area. So I'm just right now just making my core shadow a little darker just to show you how much darker that it should be so that it pops and contrasts. When I'm talking about low tech, I just started to post some pictures on Instagram for um, for business purposes not not you know i don't have a, a personal instagram so i just learned how to do that on the computer i didn't know that instagram was even a just pretty much a phone based system and i just figured out how to trick my computer into thinking it's kind of like a phone there's a way of doing it and post pictures that way and for me that's like whoa like wow i'm getting technological there <laughs> Whether I continue to post things is a totally different story. And I definitely do not have a Facebook account. Uh, don't want to put myself out there like that. Don't want any high school friends calling me. No. Leave me alone. <laughs> You can see now when I add the black, it is much darker down here, especially right right under the can um, than the core shadow that I that I shaded right here. So we really need to keep those coils nice and tight there, and also press really hard. Okay, make sure you press really hard with your colored pencil. Keep your coils tight so that there is less white of the paper showing through. And you may have to do two or three layers of pencil to really build up that uh, shadow color. I don't know, you guys probably don't even use Facebook. Does anyone who use Facebook anymore? I heard that it was passe. Passe means out of style, no longer used by uh, people in your age group. Is that true? Is that true? Is there something that's replaced that now? I said, are you guys still doing a Facebook or are you guys onto something else now? Oh, oh. <laughs> It's for the older crew. That That is very nice. That's a nice way of putting it. <laughs> so what do you guys use now? How do you communicate with one another and connect with one another? Oh. iMessage. Now that's a new one. Uh, to me. Oh, uh, so it's only for the iPhone users. Okay. Well... That's not going to help me, but not that I would want to reach out to anybody because I'm a hermit. We're talking about Instagram and having a spam account for just casual, you know, friends and 
uh, quite casual acquaintances, but then in letting loose and being creative, but maybe not something you want your parents to see. That's very interesting. I'll keep that in mind for my daughter. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> By the time my daughter starts doing all that kind of stuff, I'm sure there'll be another new type of uh, internet software that everyone's going to be uh, popularly using and raving about. So that you girls are teaching me some interesting stuff. Interesting. One minute left. Okay. So what I'm doing here is I'm trying to get a little bit lighter with my shading. And as I come out toward myself, like toward this edge right here, I'm opening up this graffito line, making it looser. So we have a core shadow. Um, we have a dark middle tone here, right? But then over on this side is a lighter mid-tone. Oh, so now you popping uh, back in reminds me that I have to take roll before it gets away from me. Our light source is right over here on the upper right-hand corner. So the darkest part of the shading, that is called our core shadow. Uh, the second darkest is going to be our dark but we have two areas here so let's see what what are we going to do here why don't we call that our dark mid-tones or darker mid-tones and then this could be our dark mid-tones because we split up the mid-tones into uh two different areas of mid-tones so we have darker mid-tones and dark mid-tones and then finally on the very left that's our reflected light area. Okay. Then on this side, we are going to have our, let's see if we're gonna, we're gonna have our light mid-tones. We're gonna have our lighter mid-tones. And then we're going to have our highlight. And we're just going to say light. We're just going to call this a light value area. Just a, an area with a little bit of shading in it, just to cover up this little pencil line here that makes up the side of our cylinder, just so that we don't rely just on that line to see the cylinder. The top of this cylinder is going to be the lightest um, thing on the whole page. It's going to be the lightest side overall, but let's do the light mid-tones. So if you are art two, you should try to um, sharpen your pencils often. And I'm going to open up my scraffito line just a little bit and keep it, make it a little looser so that we show more of the white of the paper through. I could always put another layer of red and black. I'm going to put black next and then another layer of red if that looks too light. And just put the squiggles all the way down to the bottom. And try not to have them go uh, like tighter or more loose within the same area. You want it to look kind of consistent so that you get one value. So then I put my red there. Now I'm going to definitely use a little bit of black so that, you know, there's a little bit of black everywhere mixed in with the red. So I need to continue doing that so that all the, all the colors kind of relate to one another. The only time I may not use black, maybe kind of in the highlighted area right here, this little skinny area, not the next area, but the area next to that. Maybe, or maybe I'll put a, a, the lightest, faintest touch of black in there too. But it doesn't really matter. It's not gonna make a huge difference.
don't want to get too light too quickly so I'm just going to put one more layer of red just really nice and loose but I'm trying not to make it as dark as this over here and I think it's not it's not quite that dark so I think that's fine and I'm just gonna leave it like this okay so this is definitely lighter than this right here okay now I need to go even more light so how am I going to go even lighter when I'm using the same red pencil each time but I'm pressing less hard on the pencil tip, so it's more of a feeling kind of thing. So I'm definitely pressing more lightly so that I don't get a heavy, dark red mark. Okay, so then that's it. That's lighter, even lighter than what I just did, and that's considered my lighter mid-tone. I'm still going to add a little bit of black, just really, really lightly, the faintest amount, Okay, I'm going to stop there before it gets too dark. Hold that up. So I just did this layer here and that's definitely lighter. So let's go in with red now again. And now you're just really pushing very lightly, barely pushing, just barely graze the surface of the paper, just barely. And you're just leaving the, the faintest graffito lines. I don't think I'm going to add light to that. Now I'm going to go to this edge here. The only reason why we see the cylinder is because there's this gray pencil line there. I want to get the attention off this little pencil line here and just blend it away, cover it up with some value. If you need a dark outline to uh, see your drawings and your forms, then that is not a good thing. You should let your shading at this point speak for you. Um, that is a little strong. So I'm going to take my eraser and I'm just going to lighten it up with the eraser. And yes, um, colored pencil, there you go, can be lightened up with an eraser. It can't be completely erased, like not like completely erased but it can be most of it can be lifted up and that could actually prove to be an advantage for you here because you might want to just remove a little bit of the color if you went a little too dark i'm looking at my highlight and i'm like hmm, maybe i want to make the highlight a little bit wider so i'm going to just run my eraser but i like how that really faded that area of highlight here Okay, and it's still textural. Let's do the top of the can. So let's put a nice, super thin, because this is supposed to be the lightest surface of all, right? It's gonna compete with the highlight on the side. So let's just try to use the, the lightest touch of all. I'm gonna, I'm gonna lighten up this back here, this back line just because it just, it's so dark, it's, it's overbearing. And I'm gonna fill it in with some shading and hopefully we won't need that line. You can barely see that, but it's there. So right along this bottom left edge of the circle right here, of this oval right here, I want you to make that a little bit darker and also just kind of have it fade to the right and also fade as it goes toward the top of the curve here so it's almost like a little crescent moon shape so we're going to add a little bit of um, tonal variation remember that tonal variation is where you went from dark to light 
on each side of the cube. Remember when we did that? Um, tonal variation helps to create a sense of perspective too. Like this, like there's a sense of we're going off into the distance as as the light changes across the surface of an object. It implies space, like a, a certain distance in space that you're crossing. Um, it also, depending on how well you shade it, it'll also make the top of the can look like it's flat. It's not like the top of a muffin, which is like, you know, poofs up when you bake a muffin or a cupcake. You know how the, the batter, when it cooks, it just like poofs up a little bit. It's not really supposed to look like the top of a muffin. It's supposed to look like super flat. So I'm creating a little bit of value and I'm fading it away as I go toward the center of the circle. Of the, I'm calling it a circle, but an oval because we're looking at it from an angle. So now there's tonal variation. Look at that. So it's not just pale like, you know, red. It's going from a darker value to a lighter value as I go toward the direction of my light source, which is over there. So this edge is going to be darker, but not as dark as all the shading but down below it, okay? So my only problem now is I like all the shading that's on the can or the cylinder, but I don't like the shading on the shadow. I feel like the cast shadow is way too um, pale, so I'm going to just add a little bit more value to that so that it looks darker by pressing harder on my pencil. And we could probably do this just in a minute. It just does not take very long at all. Colored pencil is nice. You know, it's a little different from pencil in that uh, all the coloring stuff, the pigment is, is um, it's cast in inside this wax like this wax long cylinder, basically. They melt all these materials together to create the center of each of your pencils. And then, um, I don't know how they uh, get it into the wood. Maybe they drill a hole. I don't know. I think drilling a hole into something that's a cylinder is very, very tricky to do. But then, or maybe they, I don't know, they encase it in two, into two pieces of wood. So now I'm taking my black colored pencil and I'm just gonna make it go from dark to light with a layer of black on top of the layer of red that I just made darker. And then I think that's going to do the trick and that'll finish up our cylinder drawing. So I had a young lady who did not like this texture at all. She like started kind of freaking out. <laughs> and I'm sure that there are some people who don't like this texture either. There's very, like people are very sensitive to different textures, colors, smells. Um, so don't discount the importance of all of those kinds of senses. You know, and this this definitely appeals to your tactile sense, meaning the sense of touch. When you see a uh, scraffito, you really feel like uh, there's definitely a kind of curly, wiry texture here to see, and you can almost imagine how that would feel. And some of you might not like it.
So there, now I feel like that cast shadow is really nice and rich in color. So I think that's, that's pretty successful right there for the cylinder.